kind of a unique take on on entrepreneurs that try to flip companies. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, so nothing nothing against them, but I just I do feel like um, entrepreneurs should be very aware of what their investors want, right? And I think you should always be really totally aligned with your investors because the lack of alignment is what creates a lot of heartache between investor and entrepreneur. And so when we say at Floodgate, we invest in Thunder Lizards, right? We invest in those 15 companies that want to, you know, crawl across the Pacific Ocean, take over Tokyo and eat buildings and trains and generally disrupt markets, right? We are looking literally for Godzilla. That isn't the type of company that, you know, believe, you know, you're not going to say Godzilla, we're investing Godzilla, and that Godzilla is not going to sell for $5 million to Facebook that same week, right? And it's just a self-awareness. And I've talked to, you know, at Stanford, to some of my students, if I say to them, if I say to my class, how many of you, if I said, I'll write you a check for $5 million that you could direct deposit into your bank account, how many of you would take that and sail off to the Bahamas for a few weeks? Or, you know, how many of you would take that money and believe that you could turn that into a billion dollars? Is this a fl- or is this an offer that you're making for? Our- <laughs> I just got a big checkbook in the back. There like, you go. Like these. But 99% of the class, if they were really honest with themselves, they would say, I'm going to take that $5 million and go to the Bahamas, right? And that's not a value judgment on that person, but it is a risk profile that they need to be very well aware of. And, you know, I was just giving advice to um, a friend of mine about just general career things. And he was saying, you know, should I found a company or what should I do? And one of the things that I was pointing out was, you know, if you don't have an idea that's screaming out to you that needs to be birthed at this very particular moment, you got to remember that the 100th employee at Facebook did better than 99.999% of all entrepreneurs, right? So if it's sort of a financial motivation, then there's like great companies that you can join that are a rocket ship and you should just get on. But, you know, if there's an idea that's screaming to get out, that's an indication that maybe you are a founder. Um, but it's that there's a threshold for that. I yeah, think. Mike Arrington's talked about that before. Where the, these the there's a class of people that do that. They'll be at Google pre IPO, then they'll move to Facebook, and mm-hmm. and then they'll move on to whatever else is next. And they live seem to live pretty great lives. But they're not founders, yeah. like you said. Yeah. What so you you all make investments that range from correct me if I'm wrong, 150 thousand to roughly a million. Yeah, I mean, well, we have some greenhouse, but our core bets are from 500 thousand up to more recently we've done slightly bigger bets around three million dollars but really i mean our core bets five hundred thousand to about one or two million dollars and what would you consider as is is flipping your company is flipping your company is it does it threshold at five million does it threshold at ten does it because you all have had you all have talked about this as well that hey if 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 a company has a 50 million dollar exit you are getting in at a point where that that could still be an incredibly great outcome for you all i think flipping is actually more of a psychology right so flipping is not you've run out of alternatives and now you've gone through all of your hypotheses as to how to make this a successful business model and everything has worked up against you and we've all run out of ideas And now we're going to go and try to sell the assets of the company, make some money for the investors and for the entrepreneur. That's a different mental model than, you know, I haven't even started yet and someone gave me $5 million to join their company. That's just like an expensive career fair, right? Um, I just, uh, it's a very different model. And so if you're in it and you've exhausted all of your resources, you've been working hard at this and you have no idea how to turn this into a company anymore. And now you're going to go out and figure out how to sell the assets of the company and hope that some part of this lives on. It's very different than saying, you know, this is not, this is not the right, you know, exit. I think there's also some entrepreneurs who say, we don't want to take this company public. And so, you know, we have to figure out 
at this point, do we really go for that billion, $2 billion, $10 billion IPO? Or are we going to try to find a great acquirer? We've gone to $100 million in revenues. Now where do we go? That again, I think that's not flipping. They didn't. They didn't just sort of say, you know, five million dollars first offer. I'm. I'm gone. Um, so I think it's more of a mental shift. 